Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Here is the promised and much awaited gold plating video. So um, I have tried to do a few things already that I put in a short. Uh, you may recognize these items here. Uh, they have a little bit left to do on them. This is just step one where you have to first uh, actually plate it in nickel when you're starting with copper and then you have to put an activator on it and then do the gold plating. Uh, this is copper as well. It had a fair amount of uh, green patina on the inside, which I've cleaned off, and it's ready for the nickel plating stage. And this is a sterling clotta ring that I thought I would gold plate as well. The steps are the same, actually, for gold plating, copper, or sterling. So uh, I'll be able to do both of those and then maybe follow, um, pick these up, when these two reach the point where everything can be uh, activated and then gold plated. So here we go. Uh, first off, I got my uh, gold plating set from a place called GS Plating out of England. There are several other sets that I could have gotten, but just this one uh, seemed to be the easiest to work with for me. Uh, and uh, it's I can't remember if I had this in the short or not, but here's, oh yes, I did because uh, when, one of the delays was that I could not plug the thing in because it was made in England, and this is what the uh, prongs look like there. So I had to get an adapter, which I finally got the correct one. I got uh, one that was the wrong kind, and then I got another one, ordered another one that took forever to come. So... Uh, that is mostly what has caused the delay. So first off, you have to uh, clean, which I did clean these items already uh, just in the sink, but you have to make sure they're completely free of uh, grease and uh, oxides and patinas. So I've already gotten the patina off, and I am just using an alcohol wipe here to get any grease that might be there. And you do have to protect your skin. These are caustic acids in some cases. Um, I don't know if all of the solutions are, but uh, the nickel activator that I'm gonna have to use when it reaches that point is uh, actually sulfuric acid. So, uh, which I didn't really think you could send something like that overseas, but apparently you can because they sent it to me. This was an earring. I removed the post from it and then filed it down. Um, it was just a single earring that I got in a lot. So after I gold plate that, I think I'm going to uh, make it into a pendant. We'll see what happens. And then this uh, was from a bracelet that had lots of these uh, little crystal segments on it. And then all the stretch had gone. So I've nickel plated that. You can still see the copper a little bit through it, so I don't know if that's supposed to be the case or if I just didn't put an adequate layer of nickel on there, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so everything is clean and degreased. Then these are the nibs that go into the end of the pen. There are different types of plating. There's pen plating and brush plating and tank plating. This is pen plating. And uh, this is a little filament that goes inside. You just cut it to fit. So I will go ahead and do that. I'm not really sure how much to cut off, but we'll try. I'll try that. It looks like they are pre-cut, and I may even I may have cut off a piece of the next one. I saw a piece fall down somewhere. Okay, so you place it into the end of the pin, and it says to just kind of make it fit. And it works by, um, I believe, by completing a circuit. 
because you have to, um, and I'll show you in just a minute, there's a little alligator clamp that you uh, clamp the object with, and then there's a lead wire that goes on the end of the probe. So I think once you touch the, um, the probe to the object that is being held by that clamp, um, that completes the circuit and makes the, uh, the plating solution adhere. Okay, so I will need separate ones of these each time um, because you have to rinse it and change your uh, nib in between. And each one of these solutions requires different voltage. And you have to adjust here, adjust the voltage. And it's already set at 3, which I believe is the, uh, it says 4 volts. Well, it says 4 volts here, but... On my instructions it says 3 volts so what should I do the bottle says 4 I think I'll go with what the bottle says there's a little key that they give you for adjusting the voltage so I will turn that to 4 And let's see, am I supposed to shake this? I don't think so. And it is the nickel nickel plating solution. They gave me this little thing which is a screw top and I couldn't figure out what it went to so I figured maybe it's for pouring solution out and it says the solution is reusable which is great on all of these okay and then you soak it it says for 10 to 15 seconds I don't know if you could see that draw up into the end there which I may have done prematurely. I believe I did do that prematurely because I have not yet plugged in the, the probe. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay. And now we take our solution and here's the alligator clip. That I was talking about that you hold the item with. I'll try the ring first. And sorry for the noise with these wires tapping this tray. I just wanted to have something with edges on it uh, to contain spills. Hopefully there won't be any spills though. So here we go with the, the nickel plating step. I watched some videos also of uh, people who do a lot of this, and um, it's pretty straightforward. It's not really complicated. It's just that the steps have to be done uh, sort of just right. And the, uh, there's a timing thing with the activator. Once you've done the nickel plating, and then it's time to do the activator stage, you have to uh, not delay at all between the um, activating and then the actual gold plating. So, moving along... I don't really see a whole lot of difference, but I don't guess I would since nickel and silver are very similar in color. It says not to put pressure on, to, but just to kind of float it around. And then I guess I need to move this over so I 
and get that part. Okay, I think I have adequately gotten this one. And I've already done this nickel plating step with uh, these two items over here. Those were in the short. So uh, once I finish plating these two, then everything will be at the same point. Okay. I don't know if it's showing up in the video, but you can really see the color change here on this copper bracelet where the nickel is being laid down. I can really see a difference. I didn't see as much difference on uh, the little earring that I'm turning into a pendant, but I believe I had the voltage on three for that. And then I followed the bottle on this one and set it at four, and I'm seeing a lot of difference. See, that's where I've plated, and then that's the actual color of the bracelet before the nickel plating. And you don't really have to put much pressure on at all, just like the instruction said. I'm just kind of floating it over the surface. Instructions actually said to just sort of make a puddle and then sort of spread the puddle around. And it used the phrase to float, just kind of float it on there. So I really appreciate everybody's patience with this. I've been talking about this, I think, for a month or more maybe. But with all of the, the delays, with the, uh, the adapter and converter... And then um, a lot of things happening in between. I was sick for a few days, and then uh, my son had the same thing, and I think he's getting over it now. We just had a lot going on. So it's happening really, really quick. You can compare, see the inside of the bracelet to the plated part. seemed to happen a lot faster the closer I was working to uh, where the the alligator clip is okay lots of silence here so I apologize for that it's almost uh, a little mesmerizing working on this. Okay. So now going around the inside. You can really see the change really quickly. The gold solution, I really can't wait to uh, see the difference that that makes once I start applying that. Okay. When I first uh, got this idea, I really was thinking of, there are a lot of Vermeer pieces that I have just in my own collection that... Uh, just don't look as nice once the plating starts to wear off and I thought I wonder if I can just find a way to replate that at home so that my pieces always look nice and that's what first led me to start uh, deciding whether to uh, 
learn how to do plating and invest in the equipment to do it, which actually this was an investment, but it wasn't you know, terribly, terribly expensive for what it is anyway. I mean, it was expensive, but not as much as I expected it to cost. But that's what started me on this uh, little idea of plating. And then I found out once I started looking into it that people will do things like they'll gold plate their metal uh, accents on their purses and, and belts and things like that. Some people will gold plate their uh, little parts on their cars. I probably won't go that far with this. <laughs> this is strictly for small stuff. So this looks adequately plated, I think, everywhere except where I'm holding on to the, the bracelet with that clip. So let me move the clip so I can plate that part. I'll uh, try to remember to put a, like a before and after image in the video while I'm editing. But there we are. Now I could stop right here and just have a nickel plated bracelet, but that's not what the video is about. It's about gold plating, so we will have to proceed with the next step. The next step actually is rinsing. You have to rinse off all the excess solution. Actually, I'm going to try this one again with, uh, now that I have the higher voltage and just see what happens. It's harder to get into these little tighter places. Okay. Not perfect, but we'll see. We'll see what we get. And that one's just not. I'm following the instructions for copper, so I'm wondering if maybe this actually isn't copper. Okay, so now you can save your solution, which is great. And we'll go rinse these off. and then come back for the activator and then gold plating stage. Just from that before picture and now looking at this, this is now nickel plated and it looks obviously very different. This looks pretty much the same because it started out silver, but this is nickel plated as well. It's a sterling little clotter ring. And then this, I couldn't really get the tip down between uh, those tiny little curves, but I'll still go with it and see what the end result ends up looking like. And then this little bead here, um, or I don't know what you call it. I'll just call it a bead. It was on a stretch bracelet, uh, but you could really see the copper or what I thought was copper. You I don't know, it covered it a little bit, but you can still see it in person 
is definitely still coppery. But uh, I'll still try to plate that and see and see what happens. So the next step is the uh, activator, the nickel activator, which you may recall is sulfuric acid. So <laughs> we'll see what happens with that. And actually, let's see, I was going to get something else to uh, pour that into, but I really just don't want to pour that. So, let's see, the, the plating uh, voltage on that is seven and a half volts. I will adjust the voltage to seven and a half, which is right there. Yes, there it is. Okay. Now I will plug in. everything. I've already rinsed, um, already changed the, the nib and rinsed out the pin, or rinsed out the pin and then put in a new nib. Okay, so it says without delay, the instructions say, uh, without delay to get straight to the, um, the plating after you do the uh, the activating stage. So I'm going to go ahead and pour out um, my gold plating solution and I'll have to use six volts on that. So I'll go ahead and have that ready. And I'm going to do this activator step, I guess, as quickly as I can, and then get these rinsed off. It has to be rinsed and dried between each each step. So after the nickel plating, it has to be rinsed and dried. After the activating stage, it has to be rinsed and dried, um, and so on. So, actually, I might pour some of this into the cap just because... I'm uh, not real certain about dipping that probe way down in this tall bottle. Okay, so let's see what we get. I don't really know what the activating stage does for it. I mean, it activates it, obviously, but I don't really know what, uh, like, chemically, or, you know, what that technically means. Unless it does, it's, I would assume, maybe something that makes it, uh, makes the gold plating adhere more readily. I don't see any changes really on the the nickel plating as I'm putting the activator on there. This was a, an extremely large bottle of activator um, for the small amount that's being used. I don't really know why they sent so much, but I'll take it. <laughs> okay, we'll move over the clip a bit. So we can do this part here.
I apologize if I sound kind of monotone while I'm doing this. It's just, um, it's a strange thing concentrating on this and talking and learning it all at the same time. I wanted to go ahead and do some pieces uh, completely through before the, uh, before I actually filmed the video. But then I decided I would just rather learn and film at the same time so I can share all my mishaps and everything. Hopefully there won't be any of those, but if there are, you'll, you'll get to witness them with me. Okay. I might actually, since I have to get so quickly, it says to work, work really quickly with these, um, uh, with these things. I'm thinking the two that I'm not real, um, I don't have really high hopes for these turning out nicely. I'll do those in a separate video. I want to go ahead and get to these. So I will go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to rinse these, the bracelet and the clotta, and uh, then get to the gold plating on those. So I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are at closer to the moment of truth. Um, time to start the actual gold plating. So I have taken out the, the nib that had the sulfuric acid on it, and I have rinsed the pen and I'm putting in a clean dry one for the gold plating so again it's not really difficult it's just uh, there's a lot of steps I guess that have to be done in the right order in the right way with the right timing Okay, so that's in place now, and let's see, the gold plating has, I think it was six. Yeah, six volts. So let's get that adjusted. Six. Yes. Okay. Okay. Plugged into the adapter, and now the adapter is plugged into the wall. I am so excited about seeing how this turns out, and it looks like we're just minutes away. So this is the gold plating solution that I already poured out. I'm going to dry this a little more. The instructions did talk about it being important that everything is dry. when you do this. So just want to make extra sure. Okay, so here we go with the bracelet first. And let's see if we can gold plate this bracelet. Not seeing a really huge difference. Okay. 
Maybe I will as we go. Actually, I think I am starting to see a little difference now. I believe actually what we're seeing here is an oopsie. <laughs> Look at how dark that is turning. Okay, I missed a step somewhere along the line. So I'm going to halt this one and see, I'm going to read the instructions and then I will get back to this one. Okay, so here we are back and I did figure out the problem. What we have here is a case of um, when all else fails, read the instructions, follow the instructions. Um, so it started out nice right there. But then it turned dark, this kind of like oil spot, purpley, blackish color, which I'm going to see if that can be removed and see if I can start over with that. But this is just a test piece. This cost me um, a few cents, actually. So I figured uh, not much loss if it doesn't turn out nicely. So I stopped where I was before I had gotten any of the old plating solution to uh, like this end of the bracelet or to the inside. So what I'm going to do is, um, uh, oh, the problem was that I did not rinse this. I was so uh, intent and focused on rinsing the pin and changing the nib and then getting started with the plating that I totally forgot to rinse the pieces. So this that has not seen any of the gold plating yet has been rinsed. This one has now been rinsed from the point where it was, uh, where parts of it had turned black right there. Uh, and that would have been, I guess, from the excess activator mixing with the plating solution. So I'm going to leave that right now, leave it like it is, and do the other end after having rinsed it, and then compare the difference. Because this is a learning process. Okay. So away we go. Let's see if... This side actually looks nice and golden. <laughs> okay, I think this is as far as I got with the previous plating, or the previous attempt at plating before I actually rinsed it like I was supposed to. I'll even go over the edge of the previous attempt just to see what happens. And the change is really subtle. I'll have some clips at the end um, with some better lighting. Let me go around the whole inside here with the gold plating solution. And yes, the end that was rinsed does look so much better than the end that did not get rinsed. <laughs> I'll try to dab some of this plating solution over the now rinsed 
little black spot and see what that does. Doesn't do a whole lot. But I do see some changes. And then here's the inside. The lighting is not the best right here, but hopefully you can see that. That actually looks really nice. So let's try the, the ring now. And see how that turns out. This one did not get any activator put on it at all. Let's see, what's the best way to clip that one? This one did not get any of that uh, activator on it prior to being rinsed, so I'm expecting better results here. The uh, tank plating, I believe, is where you put the solution into a small tank and then the voltage just runs directly through the tank and you put the items in there. I am seeing some change on this. It's actually looking really nice. I have a ring, a little uh, Vermeer lotus flower ring that was given to me as a gift that uh, had lost some of the plating on it and I had actually hoped to be able to replace some of that plating but I can't find the ring now. I was actually looking for it to uh, maybe make it a part of this video and cannot find it. We'll definitely have to do a before and after because there's a really huge, huge difference. Get that will focus. There we go. Huge difference here. And this is 24 karat gold solution. Now let's get some of it on over here where the uh, where the clip had been. This is unbelievable. A lot easier than uh, than I thought it would be. A lot faster than I thought it would be to do something like this. So you'll have to get in the comments, please, and let me know your thoughts on this. If you've done this before, uh, I will take all of the tips. I can get. I even thought actually if I uh, can get really good at this 
maybe upcycling purses and stuff by gold plating the, the hardware on them uh, to upcycle and, and resell. I don't know if the uh, solutions might damage the material that any purse is made of, I don't know, but that was a suggestion that I'd read somewhere online that people were actually gold plating their purse hardware. Okay. I think I would like to actually, well, no, I didn't activate those, so. I'm going to try this a little bit more before I wrap it up on this black, <laughs> black part of this bracelet here. No, nothing really. But that end, after it got rinsed, that end does look a whole lot better than the first end. But here we are. I'm going to rinse these two, and I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this. I apologize for the monotone in my voice. I was trying to concentrate so much while I was doing this, and I know my uh, my vocal intonation was probably not the most interesting <laughs> during this video. But uh, here we have um, an example of not following instructions. Uh, I forgot to rinse the sulfuric acid off um, before doing the plating, and then it ended up with these ugly black places, but the set came with instructions for stripping other platings off before doing a plating, a gold plating. So uh, I'm going to follow those instructions and see if I can strip this and uh, start from scratch, maybe get better results next time. But here is that clotta that turned out just beautifully. I was actually surprised at how nicely it turned out, given how simple it was. Um, uh, and simple as in, you know, this was a first time, so it had its little hiccups, but uh, there's not a whole lot of complicated steps. It's just that uh, they have to be done in the right order. But here's, uh, I don't know how to do a before and after inset in a video. I'll learn how to do that. But here's a comparison. This sterling ring was um, the same in color tone as, uh, as the clotta prior to plating. And here is the difference. Just amazing. I was so excited with how that turned out and I'm looking forward to plating more things, uh, maybe using it to do some upcycling and um, uh, maybe do some uh, purses and things like that as well. So uh, let me know what you think. If you have any tips and tricks, if you are familiar with plating and have any advice for me, I would love to hear it. And um, also if you enjoyed the content, give me a like and a share. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and share this with someone else who you think might also enjoy it. Thanks a lot, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!